So you only have a short time to spend in Philadelphia. You might be asking yourself, is it worth it? How much can I really see and enjoy in this city? Welcome to Sarah Scoop and Travel Channel. In this video, I want to share the top sites you can easily fit into a 72 hour trip. To make the most out of your limited time, decide where you are staying in the city and what is strategically close to your accommodations that may allow you to walk to the sites. Then group sites by their geographical location so you don't lose time traveling back and forth to the same areas of the city. I want to share three different areas with you in this video. The first area is along the Schuylkill River. The highlights in this area are the Mutter Museum at the College of Physicians in, of Philadelphia, the Rodin Museum, the Philadelphia Museum of Art and Rocky Statue, and the Eastern State Penitentiary. The Mutter Museum is a physician museum which includes preserved body parts featuring different types of diseases. I find biology fascinating and even have some experience working in neuropsychology, so this was right up my alley. If body parts, diseases, and medical cases are not something you are interested in or make you uncomfortable, this might not be a stop for you. They have some exhibits available at the entrance that you are able to photograph. However, they do not allow the videography and photography in the main exhibit, out of respect for the specimens and the people who donated their bodies to science. You do need to purchase tickets in advance online for a specific visiting time, so plan accordingly. If you're looking for a little exercise, from here you can walk to the Rodin Museum. Even if you don't plan on visiting the collection, the building is worth stopping to see. And from the Rodin Museum, you will see the Philadelphia Museum of Art located at the end of the Benjamin Franklin Highway. When facing the museum, you will find the Rocky statue on the right side of the museum along the road. Stop and snap a few pics before making your way to the top of the stairs to enter the museum. If you're feeling adventurous, you can recreate the Rockies running up the top of the stairs uh, from the movie. This was a highlight activity for many of the visitors the day we visited. The Philadelphia Museum of Art houses various collections, including European classics like Rodin, Monet, Picasso, and Van Gogh, as well as contemporary artists like Andy Warhol, Zoe Leonard's Strange Fruit, Tambly's 50 Days at Ilium, and various works by Jasper Jones. There are pieces on display of European decorative art and sculptures, from stained glass to medieval armory to tapestries and ceramic tiles. They even have full rooms on display from various European time periods. The South Asian collection includes various sculptures, the pillared temple hall, and other beautiful works. There is also an East Asian collection. Watch your time because if you're like me, you can easily spend the majority of the day making your way through all of the collections. Finally, in this section, I recommend visiting the Eastern State Penitentiary, which is where Al Capone was imprisoned. You can purchase tickets online in advance of your visit. They offer an excellent audio tour that walks you through the prison and various blocks, providing the history of the museum from its original construction and use as a mental health asylum to when it was decommissioned in the 1970s. At the end of the audio tour, there is an exhibit regarding current prison statistics and challenges in the United States, outside in the yard, and then an additional exhibit inside a gallery. The second area of Philadelphia that I want to highlight is in the middle, which includes the historic City Hall, Dilworth Park, the Love Statue, Rittenhouse Square, and the Reading Terminal Market. There are tours available for the City Hall building, however, the architecture alone is worth a visit to the outside of the building. On the west side of the building, you will find Dilworth Park. This is a public park featuring gardens, a cafe, an ice skating rink in the winter that turns into interactive fountains in the spring through fall months, and roller skating in the spring and summer. This is also a great place to access public transportation. In the warmer months, you will find festivals, live musical performances, outdoor movie screenings, and happy hour specials in the park. From Dilworth Park, head across the street to Love Park at 15th Street and John F. Kennedy Boulevard. This is where you will find the famous Love Statue. This statue was created by Robert India for the U.S. Bicentennial in 1976. 
take some pictures with that special someone, or take a selfie to symbolize your love for yourself. From the Love Statue in City Hall, you are close to the Reading Terminal Market. This is an amazing indoor market with stalls selling anything from meat to produce to crepes to coffee to cheesesteaks to even vegan street food. This is an excellent place to visit, especially if you are trying to feed a large group of people. Not only do they offer a variety of options to satisfy anyone's taste buds, but it is also a great place to get a variety of dishes from different stalls and share your finds with everybody. That way, everyone gets a little bit of everything. We found a stall that specialized in Georgian food. We had to try one of the cheese boats. The base is a piece of homemade bread baked with cheese. On top of the cheese is a cracked egg as well as other toppings. Our boat had various mushrooms and spices. When you get the cheese boat, you are supposed to mix the egg into the cheese to cook the egg. Then you can use the bread to eat the filling. It was so tasty. But how can you go wrong with bread and melted cheese? Seriously. Southwest of Love Park is Rittenhouse Square. This is a nice little public park that offers benches and fountains. On a nice day, it would be pleasant to sit and enjoy the city. Around the perimeter of the square, you will find shops and restaurants. Some of the restaurants are popular locations trending in the city, like Park and Rouge. If you are looking for a treat, I recommend stopping at Max Brenner. They offer regular food items if you're looking for a meal, but their specialty is anything featuring chocolate. If I can make one suggestion, get the Italian thick hot chocolate in milk chocolate. It is to die for. It is the best hot chocolate I have ever had. They dispense the hot melted milk chocolate from a large supply before mixing it with French vanilla cream. This is the real stuff. The third area includes Edgar Allan Poe's house, Chinatown, Independence Hall, the Liberty Bell, Philadelphia's Magic Gardens, Elfreth's Alley Museum, Betsy Ross's house, Benjamin Franklin's grave, Cherry Street Pier, and the Benjamin Franklin Bridge. Each one of these are pretty quick attractions that can be combined in one day. I recommend starting with either Philadelphia's Magic Gardens or Edgar Allan Poe's house as they are the farthest apart and then make your way through the attractions until you reach the other end. For the purposes of this video, I will start at Edgar Allan Poe's house. This house is actually part of the U.S. National Park Service and is a National Historic Site. There is no fee to enter, however you must knock to enter. The building you enter is Poe's neighbor's home. Poe's house is next door and is the one you will be touring. This is a self-guided tour where you can explore the rooms where he lived and had some of the happiest and most productive years of his life. The rooms are deteriorating and there is no actual furniture in the home. There are decorated screens portraying what the rooms may have looked like decorated with furniture. From the gardens, you can tour the basement which inspired the short story, The Black Cat. After Poe's house, you can venture over to Chinatown, which offers a variety of Asian markets, restaurants, and architecture. Then you can make your way to Cherry Street Pier and the Benjamin Franklin Bridge. There's not much to see at Cherry Street Pier in February, but it does offer nice views of the bridge and Delaware River. My guess is this is a nice outdoor area in the warmer months. From here, make your way to Elfreth's Alley Museum. This is the oldest continuously inhabited road in the U.S. Please be respectful, people do live here. You can enjoy a stroll down the cobblestone road. From here, you're not too far from Betsy Ross's house. For a fee, you can tour her home, which is staged with furnishings as well as actors and actresses for historical storytelling. This creates a feel of what it may have been like in the 18th century. During the American Revolution, American women gave their families hot chocolate or coffee instead of tea. It was patriotic to drink hot chocolate. You can view a display dedicated to hot chocolate and Betsy Ross's recipe. From here, walk two blocks west on Arch Street and you will find Benjamin Franklin's grave on the corner of Arch Street and South Independence Mall East. Now you are nice and close to Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell. In February, there is no entrance fee for Independence Hall, and they offer free 20-minute tours. 
I recommend waiting for a tour so you can visit the inside of Independence Hall, which includes the Supreme Court and the hall where the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution were debated and signed. Once you are done with your tour, head across the street to learn the history of the Liberty Bell and the role it has played through various social movements nationally and internationally. At the end of the exhibit, you will find the bell on display with a view of Independence Hall in the background. This is where the bell rang for many years. Finally, if you are feeling like some more exercise, you can walk past Washington Square as you make your way to Philadelphia's Magic Gardens. You do need to purchase tickets online and select a reservation time before your visit, so plan accordingly. Isaiah Zagger is the creator of this art environment installation. He started creating the mosaic in 1991. It is a mosaic wonderland to explore. You can wander through the avenues and up and down stairs as you make your way through the exhibit. There is so much to see and take in around every turn. Or you can join a tour. For families, there are cards for a family scavenger hunt that allow you to interact with the exhibit and enjoy the space together. There are more attractions to experience in the city of Philadelphia, but it is my hope that after watching this video, you feel you can accomplish a lot in only 72 hours in the city. Don't let a short duration spoil your fun or discourage you. Get out and explore. If you have other recommendations for must-see attractions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. If you would like to support future productions, please buy me a snack using the link in the video description below. Also join the Facebook group and follow me on Instagram for more content.